Gonna get in here. Oh. Many unfinished projects. If I can get it out. This should be fun. Huh. I really wouldn't fit through that gap. Turns out we'll fit through easy. Hitch. And look at that. Perfectly balanced. Doesn't even lift the front of the bike up. Park the uh, tow vehicle. <laughs> Not that anyone's going to steal it, but hey. <laughs> How's that for an easy launch? Straight in. <laughs> Very much like my old motor. These things are pretty much bulletproof, hopefully. <laughs> We're counting on it. Uh, let's push out. Let it warm up a bit. And we might even push this uh, tank up a bit further. Put a little bit of weight up the front. Maybe one hot lap.
<laughs> but how good is it to have the little red boat out again? It is fun. Just a nice little fun whip around. And so easy to launch and nice and close, so it requires very little effort to get it on the water. Now that we've got our uh, tow vehicle all set up. So we'll start getting it back into the mix and we'll do a little bit of a road trip with it at some point soon. This looks all right, doesn't it? Nice little zone. You might need to lift this up on that. <laughs> and most importantly is out of the wind oh it is getting shallow though I'm just going to get right up and as far as I can and then I'll work my way back. <laughs> so I'll push myself just a little bit further up forwards, up there, and then I'll just start casting. So, yeah, welcome back. This one could be just the shortest trip ever. Basically what I've been doing is, um, I've been looking on Facebook Marketplace for a little while. As soon as I saw that my boat needed to go in for a service, my bigger Staby craft, I thought, you know what, I don't want to be left without a boat for a couple of weeks if it takes a while, because last time I put up for a service, it took a little while. So I was like, man, I better get the little red boat. I've been meaning to and wanting to get it back in action anyway. So the pocket rocket has come out of retirement. Just, it was all packed up in the back of the garage there. It's been uh, packed up for a little while, but it's so good to get it back out on the water. And I've forgotten just how fun it is to ride these little kind of boats. So it was really cool just to sort of get it out and go, all right, now we need to get a motor. I had to sell the old uh, Mercury that I had. Uh, so it's taken a couple of like, oh, maybe, look, I've been looking on and off for like a month or so. Um, you know, with the intent to buy something. It took a little while to find one, but in the last minute, I uh, literally got this one. I think the guy had it up for all of nine minutes before I replied to him. Hopefully it gives me a good run like the other one, because the other one, I really put through the ringer. I, you know, I was doing 60K runs out to, you know, the outer barrier reef in it. So the idea is just to go for a run around the creek before we do something stupid, like go offshore and get stuck 10Ks out. <clears throat> and then here our motor just die and you just feel your heart sink <laughs> and it's gonna start raining and I didn't bring my rain jacket awesome it's been so on and off recently the weather oh I can feel it clipping the mangoes already <laughs> that was a little flatty just there. I'll try and go back over him. He was actually only about halfway back. A little flatty just came in out of swipe. Mm -hmm. This might be the last cast before the end of the line before I get pushed into the bush. <laughs> Just that one little hit from Flatty. We should uh, we should just wind it up and do it now before I get too shallow. Ah.
funny to be seen though, unfortunately, apart from that one little, little hit <laughs> and miss. <laughs> ah, what are we gonna do? Are we gonna go up further or maybe we'll work this slightly deeper water line, see what happens there. Let's give it a go, let me try something. The only really annoying thing about that motor is um, the US version has um, no earmuffs. You can't put earmuffs because the vents aren't here. They're actually under there. So it's a real pain because you've got to hold on. You can get like something that clips on like under here. Um, but it still doesn't, I don't know if it still gives you the ability to, so you can see how high the propeller comes. It's still kind of right up there, up against this plate. So I'm not sure if the proper flusher actually still allows you to put it in gear. But um, yeah, it's just that vent there. So you just gotta hold your hand sort of and put it there. Just make sure you don't put it into gear and you're good to go. <laughs> just for a quick flush. That was a, is a minor success because uh, we did get the boat out and we did have a bit of a muck around, which was great. But unfortunately, um, yeah, no fish. But then I thought, you know what? I don't really need fish because I've got a fish in the fridge that I've been sort of working on and it's something that I've been wanting to do. This is not going to be the full on dry age episode, but what we do have is some of that tuna left. And if we open the fridge here, if we dodge all the bikes, you can see we have, well, this is the one that's dry aging. We've got another piece on the other side there, but yeah, it's coming along nicely. It's got a quite a thick crust. So we'll cut into that in another video. But um, I'm just, uh, that's probably two weeks now, going on two weeks. So we'll use this one and we're going to save this guy for the full on dry, dry age test episode. Bit of overkill for such a small bit of meat, but it does make it a little bit easier and more consistent. This is always a very satisfying thing, this. And it's that simple to get beautiful and the tuna is just so underutilized isn't it it's just such beautiful looking mince you think just even looking at it that it could even be just beef but um yeah let's mix up some patties huh if you haven't seen uh, the tuna cheeseburgers I've done before that's what we're going to be making again except this time we're using long tail tuna so Typically regarded by many as a better quality uh, tuna um, because the other ones were made with mac tuna and I guess the whole experiment with the other one was showing that you could actually use some you know less desirable fish or fish that people sort of uh, call trash fish often but this time we're using the fancier tuna so that means it looks really clean and delicious doesn't it super lean so what I did last time is I added um, some like some pork fat but what I'll do is I might just chop up or finally chop up a little bit of bacon because we don't have or some bacon rind because I don't actually have any pork fat today. We're just using whatever's in the fridge. But um, I do also notice that like the, I don't think that that video really did uh, did much. I don't think that many people saw it. So I was like, oh, it's a, such a disappointment that people aren't seeing the tuna in different lights. So I thought, let's just do it again. And it's sort of tucked away in, in another video anyway. So I didn't want to do like something all new anyway. So let's just quickly bang it out. But we're going to do the simple wide version, but it's surprising how meaty and delicious a cheeseburger made of tuna can be. Now we're just going to add some fennel seeds. And some dried parsley. We're going to use dried parsley. And salt and pepper. Oh, it's coming out the bottom of the box. So. Half of it's in there already. And pepper. And we just got enough pepper out of that because it looks like we just ran out of pepper, so we'll have to fill that up again. 
you happen to have some nice uh, fatty bits of bacon. And that's going to be heaps in that. And that'll help flavour it up and give it some fat content. Okay, and just shape it into patties. <laughs> Might just make two patties, that'd be plenty. We'll make a double cheeseburger maybe. <laughs> and no need for the egg in these ones, because they hold it together quite well, as you can see. <laughs> How good is that? Like just, it's just, I still can't get over just how good they are. And it's tuna, it's not beef. So yeah, like it just, it opens up the whole new world of ways to look at fish, especially tuna. And um, yeah, when you get like, when you pull one in, like your mind just clicks over with so many other meals now, not just, you know, fish and chips or fried fish. It's very exciting. <laughs> Hello, Ray. <laughs> Fancy you turning up. Oi, get out of here, flies. And it'd be cool if we had some like proper burger cheese, but that's all right. We'll make do with what we've got. You know what we could have put in them? Onion, but I forgot to put it through the mix. Uh, do we even have an onion? Let's have a look. <laughs> what we can do is we'll just put a couple of little onion rings on and here we go and we can just pop a couple of those on top fresh Got some sweet pickles, cheese, put the onions on the hot plate for a second, just get them nice and toasty. So we'll probably just paint this with a little oil as we grill them, and then once these are grilled, we're ready to go. We'll heat the bun up on the uh, hot plate as well. And it's as simple as that. That's the makers of a pretty amazing burger. Now I'll switch to the grill because I just realised I want to be able to push them down and flatten them out a fair bit. There's your salt. Oh, put the onions, they're about ready to come off. and start assembling really. Okay, so 
probably should have put our cheese on while it's on the grill, but concentrating too much on cameras and not enough on uh, the cooking. <laughs> but wedged in between two patties, that cheese will melt no problem. So we've got the double stack with meat, then what, onions? I reckon maybe onions. Oh, yum. More sprinkle and more salt. And pickles and maybe mustard. More mustard. Oh! Pickles. Probably three pickles is enough, I'd say. Don't want to overload too much, but they're nice and sweet, so they'll definitely give it a beautiful flavour. And maybe with sauce on top. Now, if that doesn't look like a good lunch, I don't know what does. And it's fish. That's epic. Okay, let's get this burger. Oh, look at that, double cheeseburger. Let's pop it down there, and you know what I bought? I'm not making, I'm not making hot chips, but these will do just fine. Big handful of crisps. Yum. You're cheating a bit. Oh my, where are we going to do it? Wow, how good does that look? Very, 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 very much looking forward to eating that. <laughs> Let's do it. Alright, steel chip. Mm. How good are kettle chips? You know, I remember when I was a kid when these came out and like kettle chips weren't a thing. And now they're everywhere, and that's just how chips are. I wonder if other kids know that uh, this wasn't always available, kids, and they're bloody delicious. <laughs> right, let's grab this burger. Let's try and keep it looking good while we grab it. <laughs> wow. Okay, big mouthful. Mmm. <laughs> Yum. That is so good. The tuna tastes surprisingly meaty. I guess you can't really go wrong with a bit of bacon fat in there, can you, as well? Plus the pickles. But you wouldn't, if no one told you, you wouldn't actually think that it wasn't sort of a, like a beef burger. If, you know, if no one actually said, oh, is there something weird about that meat? You wouldn't, you wouldn't really put two, two thoughts into it. You'd go, oh man, this cheeseburger's delicious. That's all you'd be thinking. It's really good. <laughs> well, yeah. So, so good to get the red boat back into action. Um, definitely um, looking forward to getting on a couple of adventures on that there as well. Look, obviously the blue boat has taken over in regards of bigger trips and it just is a bit more practical. Um, there's a, the only real thing that the red boat definitely does do better than the blue boat is the, be the ability to just pull it up on the islands and pull it up on the sand. Because there's such huge tides, they're like sometimes it's six meter tides in some of the places I go. So you can imagine how far out the water is going and there's just no practical way to run that much anchor rope to have some kind of anchor dolly or, or to anchor it out unless you want to swim, so, you know, like 100 metres sometimes. So that was what was really cool about the red boat. You could just pull it up, pop the wheels down, just reef it up on the islands and if there was a big storm or something, you knew it was going to be there when you woke up in the morning. So that was always a nice feeling. However, in every other aspect, it doesn't quite do what the blue boat can do so it's good that we got both we'll get it back in action in some form this one will be uh, more of a fold down we won't have a trailer from this point on for it so maybe we can go on a bit of a road trip and fold pack it all down in the car and and just head off somewhere and stay for a, maybe a week or two somewhere that would be the most ideal situation for this boat but definitely keen to get it back in action however for the first time in a long time i'm talking like two months there is a really good opening in the weather up the coast so by the time this video goes up hopefully i'll be up 
heading out to an island or a coral atoll and uh, filming something special. So really looking forward to it. That'll be on the big blue boat, I'd say. But yeah, gonna finish my lunch. And uh, yeah, I realize there's no need to kill another flathead. You know, I've got some delicious fish at home. So we'll finish this burger before it gets too cold. And yeah, we'll see you on the next one. See ya.